So today, um, super exciting day. If you haven't noticed, there is no lecture. It's all practice problems. Because what we're doing today is balancing word equations. Ooh, nice. So, there are, sadly, on the homework, there aren't as many questions, but they're a lot more fun. But, so let's go right to the practice problems. Okay. So looking at the practice problems, and there's a couple of them I'll work out, and I'll I'll try to show you some shortcuts as we go along the way here. All right. So looking at the first question or first practice problem it says write and balance the equation for the reaction of sodium and water to produce. Now remember yesterday when we talked about what this means. So what does and mean? A plus sign. Good. What does to produce mean? Arrow, very good. So keep that in mind when you're writing these out, what those those words actually represent. So what is sodium? How do I represent sodium? <coughs> Na. I just hear it. Oh. All right, so sodium and, so plus sign, water. So how do I represent water? H2O or HOH. I don't care which way you do it. I'm going to write H2O today. And then it says to produce, so arrow, sodium hydroxide. What is sodium? What is hydroxide? OH, good. Now, get in the habit because, again, this is what we're going to do on Friday. Or, I'm sorry, do it again on Friday. What's the charge on sodium? It's a metal. Plus one. Hydroxide? Okay, that's one of your polys, so make sure you know that. So that one's balanced as written, looking good. Um, and hydrogen gas, so how do I represent hydrogen gas? Here, let's take a look. Now, it was, again, one of the things that we talked about last topic, so let's take you back to yesteryear here. It was a long time ago. Bless you. Uh, if you take a look at the notes at the beginning there, Remember that? So anytime that you see hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, all by itself, that's just key, by itself, not in a compound, it's diatomic. So if it ends in gen or ine, okay, or ine, then when it's by itself, like hydrogen gas, this is how you represent hydrogen gas. Now, even if I'm representing hydrogen and I don't say what state it's in, it's still the same, H2. Okay. So if I were to say we have liquid bromine, how would you represent liquid bromine? Br2. Okay. So don't worry about the state. Worry about who it's with or who it's not with. If it's by itself and it ends in gin or ine, make sure that you're representing it with a polyatomic. Or I'm sorry, diatomic. Okay. All right. So getting back to that, so how would I represent hydrogen gas? H2. H2. Good. And just out of curiosity, what's the charge on sodium when it's all by itself? No charge. Remember, you don't get excited when you're by yourself. Okay? It's only when you get with somebody that you get to get excited. <laughs> Remember that part. <laughs> Okay. Now, that goes for every element. Every element, yeah. So if it's by itself, it has no charge. It's not until it gets with somebody or something different that it's going to have a charge. All right, so go ahead and do the inventory. So we have sodium, hydrogen, and oxygen. And for some of you, this might get a little old, and that's okay. But for some of you, this might be a comfort food for you, so to speak. So how many sodiums on the left? How many sodiums? One. How many hydrogen? Two. How many oxygen? One. And then over here we have how many sodium? One. How many hydrogen? Three. Good. Oxygen? One. Okay. Well, looks like we only have one option here. And so sodium looks good. Oxygen looks good. 
And in this case, sometimes you just have to trial and error to get this to work because what's bad is we have hydrogen here and here. So, and we're trying to get, let me ask you this. If I'm looking at say hydrogen on this side, is that an even or an odd value? Even, so no matter what number I put, put in front of the water, it's always gonna be even. Over here though, we have a what number situation? We have an odd situation. So we wanna make sure that what we get over here is even. Okay. Keep that in mind when doing this. So what would be a good number? And again, we're just experimenting here. What number would be a good one to try here? Two. Let's start with a two. Let's see what that does. And again, may or may not be right. That's okay. That's why we erase things. So if I put a two here, okay, that changes my sodium to two. My oxygen is now two. My hydrogen is what? No, two no. times one plus four. Good. That's all right. Okay. So how do I get what? Say it again. All right, so we can fix the sodium, right? Fix what both? Oh, we could put a two here. That's a good call. So now how many hydrogen do we have? Four and oxygen is two and one of three there. Can we reduce? No, because that's a one in front of yeah, essentially we have a one in front of the hydrogen, oh, okay. even though we don't put it there. Yes. Can you fix that one, two? That one, two? You have one, two on the board next to the first oxygen in green. It's just not like any of the others. <laughs> They're all twos. Oh, and that's a Z. Uh, <laughs> no, that's a Z. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next one. Yeah. What? All right. Number two B says write the balance equation for the formation of magnesium nitride from its elements. All right. What does for the formation mean? Arrow. Arrow. Very nice. Okay. So it means arrow. So what are we gonna, so we're forming magnesium nitride, right? So how do I write magnesium nitride? Mg and N, let's start there. That's a good, good way to do it. Then let's balance charges because we have a metal with a non-metal, right? So what's the charge on magnesium? It's a group 2A, so plus yes. two. Nitrogen is, what, what group is it in? 5A, so it has what charge? It will always have a negative 3 charge. So what do we need to do there? Multiply that by 2 and this by 3. So there we go. Now we're cooking. And so what makes up magnesium nitride? What from its elements? What does that mean? Magnesium. Very good. And... Nitrogen. How do I represent nitrogen? And two. Good. Now, I am not going to show an inventory for this. What do I do? Put a three. And I'm done, right? Now, if you need to show an inventory, go for it. Yeah, go ahead. The little three? By, what do you mean? Is it coefficient? Why is this three not over here? Well, here, go back over there. When do we show Mg3 ever by itself? Yeah, when would you ever have Mg with a subscript three by itself? Yeah, the only time that we would do that is in a compound when we need to balance charge. So since we need to represent three magnesium, then I'm going to put the coefficient in front. Because that tells me now I have three magnesiums. Where here, 
I needed the three because I had three up here to balance charges. The nitrite here or here? This is nitrogen, and remember from here, since we have the nitrogen, so remember if it ends in gen, gen or i, or gen or ine, and it's all by itself, like in this case, it's all by itself, then we have to show it as a dicarbon. So these are, sadly, you have to remember, and these are the only ones that end in gen or ine. So, oh, here we go. Now we're getting into some fun. All right, when copper 2 carbonate, how do I write copper 2 carbonate? Let's start with copper, Cu. And carbonate, how do I represent carbonate? CO3, good. Now let's get some charges on this. So, what's the charge on carbonate? Negative 2, very good. Make sure you know that's when they're polys. What's the charge on this copper? 2. So, how are we looking with that? Looks good and balanced, nice. Um, is heated, it forms, what does that mean? Arrow. Arrow, awesome. Copper to oxide, so again, copper, and what's oxide? O. Oh. So what's the charge on oxygen? Negative two. two, because it's in group 6A. What's the charge on this copper? Two. two. Man, I'm making this too easy for you guys. And, what does and mean? Plus well, sign. And carbon dioxide, how do I write? Yeah. Remember, the Greek tells us that we're looking, we don't care about charges, and that we're looking at non-metal to non-metal. Yeah, I'm not doing an inventory. So I have one copper, one copper, one carbon, one carbon. How many oxygen on the left? Three. And then, so it's found as written. Sometimes it works out that well, sadly. Yeah. I would not do anything to it. What would you want to do to it? There you go. All right. Sadly, 2D is the same as the first example. Sorry about that. Or do you want... Ooh, I got an idea. Let's change that. <laughs> Let's change this to, um, uh, let's say, calcium, calcium bromide, no, not bromide, that's not good, that's bad, let's go with uh, calcium nitrate, ooh, yeah, nitrate's are good, they're delicious. And that's going to react, oh, oh, sorry. And, uh, let's say, aluminum, no, uh, sodium, sodium phosphate reacts to form calcium. Phosphate and sodium nitrate. Oh, yeah. This is real deal, baby. Real deal. It didn't get any more real than this. So, calcium nitrate and sodium phosphate react. React. Same word. React. Two. Form calcium phosphate and sodium nitrate. Kind of gibberish there. All right, so how do we represent calcium nitrate? CA. CA. NO3, since it's nitrate, right? So polyatomics. So what's the charge on nitrate? Or I'm sorry, yeah, nitrate? Minus one. Minus one. I'm sure you know this for Friday, guys. What's the charge on calcium in group 2A? Group 2A? Plus 2. So, is this good? We need two of those. Okay. And it says, and 
sodium phosphate. So how do I represent sodium phosphate? NaPO4. Okay, start there. What's the charge on sodium? Group 1A. That's 1. Phosphate. A3. So how do I balance that? Na3. Very good. Uh, react to form <coughs> arrow. Calcium phosphate, so calcium CA, phosphate's PO4. What's the charge on calcium again? Plus two phosphate. Minus three. So that means I need good CA3. And I need two of those. Man, this is and sodium nitrate, so Na NO3. Good. And sodium is plus one. Nitrate is minus one. Okay. So the charges on the formulas are balanced, but not the equation. Could be, but it's not. I'm going to. No, no, we're fine. I, I just wanted to make room. Okay. All right. So let's do an inventory here. So calcium, nitrogen, oxygen, sodium, phosphorus. I think that's all of them. So calcium, how many? One. Nitrogen, how many? Oxygen, how many? Ten. Ten, good. Sodium, three. Phosphorus, one, good. On the other side, let's keep it the same order. Calcium, nitrogen, oxygen, sodium, phosphorus. So how many calcium? Three. Nitrogen, one. Oxygen, 11. Good. Four times two is eight, plus three, 11. Sodium, one. Phosphorus, two. And when I get done with this, I'm going to show you the shortcut. This one is, in all honesty, the easiest way to balance. Actually, let me get rid of that. Oh, both of those did. Okay. And I'm going to get chuck that and change that. Wait, why right. do you even need the charges? Though? What's that? Why do you even need the charges? You need them to balance out the formula. Yeah, to get the subscripts and everything. So you have to be able to write it out correctly. And here's the thing: if if these are not if these are not balanced correctly, charge wise, then you will never get these balanced ever. They won't balance. Okay. So all right. So here's our starting inventory. What do you want to start with? Good call. So I have three casting over here. So Put a three there. Changes my nitrogen. How many nitrogen do I now have? So I have one times two times three is six. How many total oxygen do I now have? So I have three times two is six times three is 18 plus. Okay. And it changes all that. So let's go over to the other side. Nitrogen. How can I get six of these? So what was that again, Kate? Very good. Put a six in front of that. Because we need six nitrogen, right? So the reason is we need six nitrogen. So I put a six, which now changes my sodium to what? Six. And now how many oxygen do I have on the right side? So six times three is 18 times four times two. So we have eight plus 18, 26. Can you say 20 again? All right, um, so calcium looks good, nitrogen looks good. Skip the oxygen, all of these. Never ever tried to do that first. Uh, sodium, how do I get this change? Put a two right there. So now I've got 
six sodium, two phosphorus, and how many oxygen do I now have? A lot? Okay, so three times two is six, times three is 18, plus two times four is eight. Look, he's there. We have 26. So it's balanced. Okay. You want to see the easy way to do it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the easy way. First, you have to learn how to crawl before you can swim. I'm a demon thing. I just I learned that before. Oh. All right. So everybody have that. Here, let me let me chuck these guys out of the way. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. If I look at the non-metals like NO3, PO4, PO4, NO3. Do those, does nitrate change from the left side to the right side? In other words, does anything about NO3 change no. from the left to the right? Other than that, but I mean nitrate, NO3, does NO3 change? No, so it's still a negative one charge and we have NO3 on both sides. The phosphate, PO4, other than there being two on the right side, does the PO4 change? No. So. I like to, whenever I see polyatomics and they don't change from left side to right side, whether it's ammonium or a negatively charged one, I like to look at the polyatomic and go ugly early. Remember that, go ugly early. And what I mean by ugly early is look at the calcium phosphate. So I have three calciums and two phosphates. So this one is the one I'm going to start with. How many phosphates do I have here? How many total phosphates, PO4s, do I have? Two. So how many PO4s do I have over here? One. How do I get two? Put a two there. Okay, everybody following me? So now I've got the same number of phosphates, PO4s. How many sodiums do I have? Six. How many do I have over here? Put a six there. Okay. Now, how many nitrates do I have? NO3s, I have six of those. How many do I have over here? Put a three there. Okay, so now I have six. How many calcium? Three. I'm done. What's that? I don't know. All right. So again, okay. So again, look for the ugly one. And it, honestly, yeah, it does matter. We don't want to start with sodium nitrate because that one's so simple. It's like, well, I got one sodium and come over here. So no ugly early, which means the one that has the most subscripts. In some cases. Two might have the same on either side, but pick one. So again, I'm going to go a different way now. So here I have how many calcium? Three. How many calcium? One. Put a three there. Okay. How many nitrates do I now have? Oh, six. Six. How many nitrates? One. So put a six there. How many sodiums do I now have? Total sodium. Six. How many sodium here? So put a two there. How many phosphates? Two, how many phosphates? I'm balanced. Now you can only do that when the non-metal doesn't change. In other words, phosphate is still phosphate. Nitrate is still nitrate. Okay. What would be a change? What would a change be? This is, we're going to learn about this on Thursday. This is a double replacement reaction. So keep your thoughts about double replacement until then. And that only works if it's a new compound like that. Like there, or there's two compounds. Two compounds. You mean two polys? Two polys, yeah. It works well with this. I'll do, there'll be another example I can show this on. Okay. Can you explain the subscripts thing again? Yeah. Like how you when you have to. Yeah, they're in six periods. Thanks. I'll just keep watching then. Don't watch the story. It's reality TV show. All right. Let's look at this question. So copper combines with sulfur. What does combines with mean? Plus. Good. So we have copper plus sulfur. Okay. And for this class, we'll leave sulfur as is. So I know that some of you thought we're calling for sulfur as S6. That's okay. And P4, but we don't worry about that. To form, what is what? Arrow. Arrow. And so how do I write copper one sulfide? So copper, what does sulfide mean? 
S, good. Remember, if it ends in IDE other than hydroxide, it's an element. It's a, just an elemental nonmetal. But so sulfide, uh, phosphide, all those guys are just a single element. All right, so what's the charge since that's our only compound? What's the charge on sulfur or sulfide? Negative two, good. So it's a two group six A. What's the charge on copper? Plus one. Is that balanced? So what do we need to do? Two there. Now, hopefully I don't have to do an inventory here. What's that? Oh. So put a two there, I think I'm done. Oh, look at this one. This. This is good. Nice. All right, silver nitrate. How do I represent silver nitrate? Excellent. NO3. And we'll get the charge here in a moment. Um, now, let's do it right now. What's the charge on silver? Good. Plus one. Nitrate. Negative one. Now, the nitrate, I would expect you to know the charge. The silver, I would expect you to go to the periodic table and find. Okay. Reacts with, what does that mean? Plus sign, good. To produce is your arrow. Okay. So sulfuric acid, if it ends in ick and there's no hydro in front, are we looking at a poly or an element? We're looking at a poly, good. So if I get rid of the ick and I replace it with what? ATE, so what is sulfate? SO4, good. So we have SO4. What's the charge on SO4? Negative two. So how many hydrogens should we have? Two. Okay. That's how you name your acids or write your acids down. Okay. To produce silver sulfate, silver, and what's the charge on sulfate again? SO4. And what's the charge on that? Negative two silvers plus one. So we need two silvers. And I apologize for giving you that nitric acid. Again, it ends in ick, so that's eight. So nitrate, NO3. Okay. All right, let me ask you this. Is this a problem that we could... Oh, 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 oh. Is this a problem that we could not use inventory on? Let me ask you this. Is this a problem that the non-metals don't change on? Yeah. yeah. So you can do it that way or the good old fashioned way. You can. It's okay. Alright. So which one's the ugly one? There's actually two of them, so it doesn't matter which one you start with. We're gonna start with the AG. 2SO4. Okay. So somebody walk me through it. Where how am I gonna start? Well, hold on. So am I focusing on the sulfate or the silver? The sulfate, so how many sulfates? One. How many sulfates? So I really didn't do anything. So let's start on the silver. Okay, so how many silvers? Two on the right, right? And then how many silver on the left? So there we go. Okay. So now we're changing something. If, if you go sulfate, sulfate, like, well, I don't do anything. Yeah, start with something that actually has a subscript. So two to two. So how many nitrates do we now have? Two. two. How many nitrates over here? One. So what do we do? Put a two there. So now we got two nitrates. How many hydrogen? How many hydrogen? We're balanced. All right. Let's take a look at your homework. And sadly, on the homework, there aren't as many problems as last night. I know. I'm sorry. I, I do. Sincerely, I apologize. Yeah, homework number two. Let me get rid of this. Yeah, bitch. It's actually getting. Yeah, so here we have homework number two. 
Now let's work out this practice problem here. And you'll notice that there aren't as many. Daggone it. I apologize for that. But I promise. I'll, I'll, I'll endeavor to make more. I promise. All right. So looking at the first one, and again, it's just more of what we've been doing. So magnesium metal. How do I write that? Mg and reacts with what's that mean? Plus sign. There you go. Nickel three nitrate. So nickel. And how do I write nitrate? So NO3. And what is the charge on nitrate again? On the nickel? Plus three. So that means I need how many nitrates? Three of those. Good. To form zero magnesium nitrate. And what's the charge on magnesium again? Group 2A. Plus 2, group 2A. So that means we need how many? 2 of who? Good. And nickel metal. So nickel, how do I represent nickel metal? And I, yeah. Okay. Now, before we go and balance this, let me ask you a question. What's the charge on magnesium all by itself over here? Nothing. Nothing. Very good. Because it doesn't have friends, it's not with anything. Good. Awesome. Last period didn't come up with that. This is a smart class. Maybe it's harder without one person. Without one person? Without inserting the person. Well, let me ask you this. Is this a problem? Is this a problem we can do without inventory? No. No, because nitrate changes. Not nitrate changes? How does it change? <laughs> no. Life. What's that? <laughs> but NO3 is still NO3 on both sides, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So let's, let's do this. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one, and it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to start with the two or the three, I don't care. So how do I get the same number of nitrates on both sides? Put a two in front of the nickel and a three in front of the magnesium. So now we have how many nitrates? Wait, why do you say? The same, good, or six. Okay, so now that I have the same number of nitrates, how many nickels do I have? <laughs> two, put a two there. How many magnesium? So put a three there, you're done. Or you can do inventory. Zinc? Where, where is it at on the three activity? Uh, like Remember the aluminum slide? What's the aluminum slide say? Three, two, one. But again, it's just look on the three activity. It's a metal. All metals are. Positive, <laughs> good. Yeah, it's oh, sorry. Oh, oh, if it's nickel, three nitrate, shouldn't there be a subscript, subscript of three after the nickel? Subscript of three here? Yeah. Okay, well, let's see. So, nickel has a plus three, right? Yes. Nitrate's a minus one. So, to balance this out and make it equal zero. <laughs> So that's why it's three. Oh, yeah, because three is for charge. Very good. Nice. All right, so the homework for tonight is homework number two. Worksheet.